On this week's episode of the Low Car Car Show, we're up north in the Keystone State. We're visiting Greenville, Pennsylvania to share the Heritage Day's classic cruise-in and all the related festivities with you. Robert Mealy was attending another car show when he noticed this 1935 Ford Coupe with a for sale sign sitting right across from him. Well, you know the saying, the rest is history. I, I had a 37 Chevy Coupe, I had a 38 Ford Coupe, a couple T-Buckets. I like the coupes. So bought the car, changed the colors on it, changed the interior, put a different motor in it, put the Mustang two front end up under it so I could drive it farther. Just changed everything on it. I do a lot of the charity shows down the West Virginia, wherever. I like doing those, meet a lot of people. The silver I wanted, the orange was when I was going to the body shop with it. They just got done doing a pickup, that whole color, just a little bit darker and I was out in the sun and I seen it and I'm like, that's it right there. Uh, silver and uh, Tangelo a gold metal flake underneath it. Paul and Gene Unverdorben bought this 1932 Ford Roadster from a friend so they could drive it as a street car. But before long, Paul decided to drag race it for 10 years. I bought it in Altoona from a friend. Uh, it was a street car for a while and I drag raced it for about 10 years. And then in 1991, we we rode it into a street rod again. Well, we repainted, we put a new chassis under it, put the engine transmission in it. But the car was basically okay. It's got 37,000 miles on it, so we use it quite a bit for shows. We don't trailer it, it goes to Columbus. We drive it everywhere, it's never been trailered. Bill Simmerod bought this 1962 Corvette straight off a car lot, and he must like it pretty well. He's owned it for the last 49 years. Okay, the day I went to buy it, uh, my mother went with me. It was at a little used car lot. Uh, the car came from California, and I'm the second owner. Uh, she went with me to buy it, and I was 22 at that time. And on the way home, she says, I love this car. She says, don't you ever sell it. And she's gone, but I still have the car. Yeah, it's all original car, except for the padded dash and the top, the convertible top. And, you know, some wear items like fan belts and, and tires and stuff like that, but mostly it's original. It's got 86,000 original miles on it. No. The first year I owned it, it's the only car I had, and I drove it through a winter, believe it or not. And uh, after that, I put it up and, uh, you know, I drive it every summer, but uh, not in the winter anymore. Nothing I really I want to change. I, on old Corvettes, I don't think you should change anything. I mean, that's a sin to do anything to an old Corvette, especially one that's survived this long uh, and had nothing done to it. So it'd be a shame to do anything to it. And I'll have the car until I'm, you know, I'll pass it on to my son and what he'll do with it. He'll probably turn it into cash, but who knows? Uh, but I hope that's a long time from now. This, this event started uh, nine years ago. I mean, the, the, the first event had 113 cars, and you can see here we're full today. There's, there's a good half mile of cars here uh, on, on both sides. So put them all together, we probably got a mile of cars if we line them, line them up end to end. There. Uh, you know, uh, this is the largest free car show in the area here. And you know, the one, you know, one unique thing that we do here later on in the day, we're gonna give away 200 bottles of wine that has the, uh, the car show logo actually screen printed on each bottle. So uh, I bill it on the, on, the, uh, on the flyers, the only drinkable trophy east of the Mississippi. We'll be right back with more amazing cars on the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. The Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group, is brought to you by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Brothers Truck Parts, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GM truck restoration. Original Parts Group, world-class restoration parts, low-car performance products, quality, plain and simple. Pete Santilli had his first 340 when he was just a kid. 
Now Pete is on his third one, this 1973 Dodge Dart 340. Uh, I started when I was just a kid. I had my first new car back in 1970. I had a Duster 340 and uh, decided after many years that uh, I kind of missed it. So I'm going through my second childhood now. And uh, I found uh, this on the internet and uh, it was in sad condition, but it was a Southern car. Uh, so there wasn't any rust or very little rust on it. Uh, I had it uh, Actually, I did some work on it and uh, contracted out to some work uh, to get it up to where it, where it is now. It's never finished, uh, you know. Uh, but the, the motor is original. Uh, it's an original car. Uh, that was the, 1973 was the last year of the, the 340. Uh, they did lower the compression on it a couple years uh, at that time. However, I had the engine remanufactured down in, in Houston. Uh, back to uh, 1970 specs, higher compression uh, engine, the 10.5 compression. Uh, the uh, valves are stainless uh, 2.02s. They're the bigger valves that they had originally. A little more aggressive cam than what the original uh, car came with. Uh, fair idle on it, but it's definitely uh, drivable. It is a driver. Uh, I, I'm not a trailer queen, uh, so I do like to. Uh, uh, take this out to the local car uh, cruises, which are just about every day of the week. Uh, so we get some mileage on it, but it's, it's fun to do. And I reminisce with the old guys from way back when. Uh, so it's, it's an all around fun thing to do. It's uh, kind of soothing. Uh, the car itself, uh, that's one original uh, paint job on it. This is the second paint job on it. So uh, it's only had uh, one, uh, paint job on it really uh, additional uh, the uh, car is registered uh, uh, under Govier's uh, Chrysler uh, registry uh, right now from I believe it was uh, 2011 is when I got it registered it was somewhere around number 10 of 50 uh, that were registered so it, it is rare uh, most of the cars you see are uh, dusters uh, this is a dart sport which is the old demon. They changed the name on it uh, because of religious issues. Uh, so this was the first year of the Dart Sport 340 uh, and the last year of the Dart Sport 340. After that, they, they made some Dart Sports, but they were 360s. Kevin Doolittle is here to proudly show off his 1929 Model A Roadster pickup. He should be proud. He spent three years doing an immaculate full restoration, assembling the body from boxes of parts. Growing up in the 60s like I did, I grew up with drag racing being on Wide World of Sports, and that's the first influential um, people that were in my life. And my father was a worked at a car dealership selling cars. He was a career car salesman, and he'd bring home muscle cars and Roadrunners, Cudas, and that kind of stuff. And I have a twin brother, and we both have been into cars since we were four years old. And But to go back into the drag strips, um, the car, the 55 Tiber that's on the t-shirts and stuff here this year is my 55 Tiber gasser I built a couple years ago. And if you go a little further back into straight axle drag racing with the gassers, it, in the 50s, it was a lot of these type of vehicles that were being gassed and put on the drag strip. So I thought I'll flip it back a little bit further and we'll go with the Model A and do a build with a gasser front end. Um, WAC Industries did the front axle for me. And on that truck, we hung it off the top of the radius bars and it brought the front end right up. But that truck out on a drive, it doesn't have a squeaker rattle in it. I mean, it drives like a brand new truck. This 1971 Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus caught Dave Huffman's attention when he noticed it was sporting a Roadrunner decal. Um, I was at Chrysler's at Carlisle, uh, walking through their swap meet area, so I was looking for a Roadrunner. I ended up finding the car and found out it wasn't a Roadrunner, kind of gave up on it. And then I went back, got thinking about it, looked at the data plate on it, and noticed all the really unusual options on it, and that's how I bought it. Most of them uh, over the years, most of them over the years got turned into Roadrunners or GTXs as, as clones, and this car having all the options it has is, is very unusual, so I wanted to get it. Um, uh, there's probably not a whole lot of them left, to be honest with you, so something unique, something unique. 
Oh, it needed an extensive rebuild. Uh, it got a lot of body panels replaced, a lot of, uh, finding a lot of NOS parts for it was uh, difficult, but uh, about a year and a half and it uh, came into play. The car is actually OE, so it's, it's down to the way it was when it was produced new. Really, it's, it's on its maiden voyage. It's just uh, had the alignment done on it here just two days ago, and this is its first, first drive. And after that, it'll go to the prices of Carlisle again to be shown and then we'll drive it around the local shows. This show is very unique in our area um, because it's tied into the Greenville heritage and the show has just a really nice following. One of the things about this show that's unique is that uh, new cars come out every year here. Uh, cars you haven't seen. Some car shows you go to, you see the same ones over and over and over. This one, there's always something new to see, which makes it a great show. It's time for Low Car Lowdown with Kevin Ford. Hey, you might think of Low Car as, a, as just a street ride company, but I want them to let you know that we do a whole lot more. We do anything from muscle cars to classic cars to trucks, modern and classic. Today I was going to talk to you about C10 trucks specifically, because we got a really cool product line specifically for the C10 trucks. If you've got a 67 to 70, you know that you've got to have a rod linkage style. Uh, throttle. Well, you know you don't anymore because what we've done is we've created a pedal that'll bolt into the factory location, come through the factory hole, and allow you to connect that new engine you just put in there with a regular carburetor and not have that hard linkage. Along the way, and we didn't forget about you late guys, late model guys, but along the way we decided to make billet brake and clutch arms to go with it. It's a really cool addition. It'll really spice up the interior of your truck. And if it's too much for you, you can do just the pads. They're the same shape and style as the factory, and they get the, the look of a low car pedal, and they're available in black or brush billet. If you want to check these out in person, come see us at a show. Find out where we're going to be, go on lowcar.com, and while you're there, pick up a free catalog. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. In Mercer County, we're known for shopping, golf, outdoor adventure, romantic getaways, and our wine and brew trail. We're here uh, with Heritage Days in this area of our county. The, the things that are well known here are our 23 mile water trail on the Shenango River, and also some of our wineries and breweries are here. In Mercer County, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of fun here. We invite you to come and see what all that we have to offer, visit us on our website at www.visitmercercountypa.com. Glenn Kubernick was looking to buy an antique truck and he had one all picked out, but the owner sold it out from underneath him. Glenn spent quite a while browsing Craigslist before he finally found this 1957 Chevy Cameo. I always liked this kind of truck. I had one before. Uh, the one that I had before, I didn't get a chance to go all the way, and I went all the way on this one, and I do as much as I can to it to improve upon it every year, and right now I got a lot of money in it, and it's a lot of fun to drive. Oh, I drive it to the car shows and have fun, and sometimes it's fun to just get on it and have a little fun. and. Every once in a while, everybody wants to see a burnout, so I got to do that too. <laughs> the engine is a 500 inch block out of a 71 Eldorado, and I uh, had it bored out 50 over and uh, put fuel injection on it, a custom intake manifold from MTS, and I've got the biggest headers I can find. I got the biggest cam that I can put into it. It produces about 500 horsepower and about 600 foot pounds of torque. It gets with the program. Merritt Buckley has a deep love for custom cars, and that's what prompted him to purchase this 1952 Oldsmobile 88 from a gentleman in Ohio. The reason I chose it, I like customs, and uh, it was built by a gentleman in uh, Southern Ohio who's uh, since deceased, and uh, I bought it off a fellow, and uh, I just like customs, and uh, I can drive it anywhere, it's a good running car. I've done a, quite a bit of work that you can't see. Um, I changed the tires and wheels and caps. It had uh, it had wide uh, it had uh, smoothies on when I got it. I like wide white whites and uh, spinners. 
and I did a lot of work uh, to the motor and uh, underneath it. Things you can't see, but basically the car was painted and everything when I got it. I drive it a lot. I can drive it anywhere. It's got power steering, power brakes, air conditioning. It's got a Nova subframe, so it uh, drives like a new car. Original Parts Group Restoration Tip. One of the most common areas for damage on your 67, 68, and 69 Chevelle is the bezel and grill extension area. Now manufactured exclusively for Original Parts Group, we have these beautiful grill extension moldings. Here we have our 1967, which is stamped from bright aluminum that features the correct black paint. We have the 1968s here, also stamped from aluminum. These also have the nice black paint, as well as the polished corner moldings. Over here we have our 1969 moldings that are manufactured in durable ABS plastic, as well as the polished corner moldings for 69 also. These are all available in pairs, and you can find these and thousands of other products here at opgi.com. We'll be right back with more amazing cars on the Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group. The Low Car Car Show, presented by Original Parts Group, has been brought to you by National Parts Depot. Make your dream happen. Appalachian Tourism, Virginia is for lovers. Croftgate USA, the only car care product you will ever need. Advertising Edge, the official uniform of the NHRA. Well, we've been a proud sponsor of Heritage Days since its inception, and we have been um, providing shuttle transportation for the event, as well as displaying some of our antique buses, and I actually have uh, a a hot rod prowler that uh, sometimes I bring down to the show. Our day today here is really focused around the motor coach that's behind us, which that is my business, and our joint venture with the Mercer County Visitors and Convention Bureau. So it's a team effort that we're involved with. Uh, we sponsor the bus, they, they uh, use us as an advertising medium, and uh, it works out very well. In addition to our over-the-road motor coach tourism business. We do winery tours here locally to many of the various destinations in Mercer County. And, you know, it takes uh, all the burden off of the, the participants and we provide the transportation services for them. So it really works out well. The wineries are members of the, of the Mercer County Visitors Convention Bureau and we provide the transportation and we're also members. It's great. Jim and Carolyn Kelly bought their custom 1950 Mercury from the Good Guys shop in Ohio. It has a 351 Windsor in it with a C6, 9 inch Ford rear end, it's air conditioned, rides good. We have a hot rod at home, it rides rough. This is pretty nice to take out and drive. We drive this car a lot, yeah, we've never trailered it. It's, it's a driver. Cars are made to drive, not to trailer around. My wife and I purchased this motorcycle in 1975, not knowing the lineage that it actually, or actually was the very first motorcycle assembled by Harley-Davidson in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, it wasn't until 2011 when I was actually restoring it to uh, give to my son for his 21st birthday that the uh, gentleman doing the restoration realized uh, something unique in the serial number. It was all zeros. So uh, I followed up with Harley Davidson, uh, called their customer service. They were kind enough to get back with me with the question, where did you get that motorcycle? Uh, come to find out, uh, apparently it wasn't intended to leave the Harley Davidson plant because it has a zero VIN number. Uh, the Ernie Copper of Thunder Press Magazine in an article in December of 2013 stated, it's very probably, very likely, the only zero VIN number motorcycle in it, privately owned VIN number motorcycle in existence, uh, which makes it obviously quite unique. Each week, Croftgate USA Car Care Products picks the best of show from the Low Car Car Show. 
This week's Best of Show Award goes to Tony Denoy and his beautiful 1953 Willis pickup. Uh, it was a show truck here last year, and I was talking to the guy that had it, and I said, if you ever wanted to sell it, let me know. Well, I got a call from him. He got married, his wife had a kid, and uh, he can't put a car seat in it. So he's gonna start on something else, so he says, do you want it, Tony? And I says, I'll take it. Uh, there's a few things I didn't like he had done, he did to it. I, like, I changed out the transmission to low car, changed that out because I like their shifters because that's how I use my other cars. And uh, I had the windows uh, tinted on it. Uh, transmission, I had a leak on the transmission, got that fixed. Put a shift kit in it while they were doing that. Plus he had the battery up underneath the dash. And I, and I didn't like that, so I changed the battery cables out and run them outside the car, so if I had to jump it, I didn't have to take my panel apart to get up underneath the dash for it. So just little stuff like that, and I, I got it out two days ago. Well, everybody I sit when I see it, they look like I'm driving through the, the steering wheel because the guy that had it, he was six foot two, and he had little seats in it. So I sit down in there, I, I gotta change out the seats. That's going to do it for this week's Low Car Car Show. We've had a grand time at Heritage Days in Greenville, Pennsylvania, where everyone enjoyed seeing a lot of cool cars at the Classic Cruise Inn. Next week, we'll be back in sunny Florida for the Dream Car Classic. Join us then on the Low Car Car Show.